together today, and we are once again uh, gathering in a variety of places here at Riverside United Church. Welcome for those that are on Zoom uh, and those that are watching on YouTube. Uh, we're grateful for this technology that enables us to be together. I need to say that we're grateful for the technology because we just spent 15 minutes trying to figure out how to do something which we haven't figured out yet. So, so that last that last video uh, play may not play in the, the sanctuary, but we'll think, well, maybe something will happen before we get there. So, um, I do want to welcome and uh, the uh, that's what I need to say as we, as we come together to begin. Um, oh, we can't hear you. <laughs> Volume isn't coming through from the pulpit. Apparently on Zoom, they want to hear me. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, better, Wanda? Okay. Sorry. There's two microphones I have to keep switching back and forth with. <laughs> Have I mentioned how much I'm looking forward to the new, vis new audiovisual system? <laughs> and all this will be controlled somewhere else? Anyway. Okay. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> okay. So you don't even know that we're not going to hear the video that you're going to hear at the end. So, okay. So as we uh, gather, we take a, a deep breath and uh, set ourselves for worship as we gather, acknowledging that we gather on the land uh, here in Ottawa that is unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin, and we seek to live in renewed relationship with the people. And as we gather, we light our candles, a uh, friend's candle, which uh, yeah. an affirming community. And we join together in our call to worship, inviting other voices to read the bolder print. Let us pray. God of the prophets, priests, and rulers who have gone before, we come here having heard your voice. In every age, you have called your people into community, welcoming saint and sinner alike into the household of faith. Anoint us now with your presence. 
rush into this, our midst on spirit wings. Establish your reign in our hearts. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our minds and hearts lead us to deeper understanding of you and the love you call us to live. Amen. I have worn glasses since I was 14 years old. And I remember clearly the day that I put on my first pair of glasses. I was in the optical store in the upper plaza on Tacoma Drive in darkness. And when I put on the glasses and out the window, all the signs of all the stores were so clear as I looked out over that shopping district. I didn't realize 
until I put on the glasses, how much I couldn't see. And I give thanks for the wonder of medical knowledge, and various devices and procedures that allow human beings to correct our vision. And I also know that many live with visual impairment and blindness. Physical visual impairment is a reality and we know something about that. But there's also a visual impairment when we use the metaphor of sight and vision to speak about our spirituality, to speak of our character, to speak of our moral ideas. And I know that there have been many times when I have received new spiritual or sociological glasses, and I have seen how things are or could be in a new way. There are many scripture stories and characters that reveal this dynamic to us. Because God is in the vision business. The holy optometrist who invites us to see through a holy lens. So today we continue to hear the story of Samuel. Last week we heard his call as a young person to be a prophet. By today's reading, he has been serving in interim leadership for the Hebrew nation for a while, and now he has the task of helping to choose the second king. The first king chosen had been Saul, and that had not worked out very well. In fact, it was terrible as Saul had totally lost sight of the holy part of his responsibility. We hear Samuel reflecting on that poor choice and basically confesses that he is, was taken by Saul's physical appearance and didn't do enough of a background check, check on his moral character. Well, Samuel has not been the last person to assume that physical appearance is a good criteria for being chosen as a leader. Many of us can probably remember back to high school or university when the popular ones were the handsome, the beautiful, and would get elected to roles, not because of ideas or leadership skills, but because of popularity. We know that in our society, the variables that determine popularity can be quite shallow or limited. Our reading today opens with God saying that Saul is rejected as king and that it's Samuel's job to anoint a new king. And I wonder if in Samuel's memoir, he ever reflected on which was the most difficult task in his prophetic career. Would it have been when he had to tell his mentor Eli that his sons were corrupt priests and had to go? That was last week's reading. Or would it have been this scenario? Because he sets out to find a new king, even when the current king is in place. There are a variety of words for that. But one of them might have been treason. Samuel is directed to the house of Jesse, and he tells Jesse that one of his sons will be king. And in the selection process, Samuel is told by the Lord regarding the oldest son, do not look at his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So Samuel goes through the lineup of the sons, and none of them prompt Samuel to get the anointing oil ready. This is an awkward moment, and so Samuel asks Jesse, is this all you got? The word of the Lord is on shaky ground until Jesse remembers the youngest son the one who was out in the pasture with the sheep. And I've often wondered whether Samuel ever thought about asking if he had any daughters. 
Anyway, someone fetches the youngest son, David, and the story says he's ruddy with bright eyes. He becomes clear that this is the one. And so David is anointed as king at the estimated age of 12. This is the beginning of the story of David, and I imagine that there is a sense of cheering for the little guy. All those who are the youngest in the family, all those who have been the last person chosen for a sports team, all those who have stood on the side of the school gym and never been asked to dance, all those who have been told they're too young or not smart enough or not attractive enough, all those who feel that they're too old to sit at the children's table, all those, let's just say that this story is a great story for those who have been made to feel that they are not worthy or suited to be chosen. This story is for the little guy. And there is the implication that it is the young one who is chosen because somehow God has looked on his heart. Maybe his bright eyes are a channel into his heart and say something about his vision and ability. Well, King David becomes a very important figure in the Hebrew story. He is the second most mentioned person in the Bible. Anybody got any idea who the first most mentioned person is in the Bible? Give you a clue, it's in the Old New Testament. <laughs> The kids are up on the stage, up at the front, they might say, Jesus? Yes. Many of us probably remember that the first story we heard about David is David and Goliath. Another story popular with the underdog. The narrative lectionary has a David story, a David week, in each of its four years. So there's this story. There's the story of David bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. And, the, and there's the story of the promise to David of an heir forevermore. There's also the story of David and Bathsheba, which is a terrible story of sexual misconduct and murder. So David has a mixed record, and yet his overall stature is remembered as a favorite king. The legacy of David is also as a poet who is credited with writing most of the songs. However, scholarship has raised questions about that claim. The strong biblical image of a shepherd has a strong association with David, and the significance of the reign and legacy of David is enshrined in the promise that the Messiah will come from the line of David, the root of Jesse. Well, that's kind of the larger picture of King David. But let's go back to ponder this story of his anointing and this sense that it is the vision of the heart that prompts him to be chosen. We may wonder, what did God see in the young David? We may wonder, what does God see? in each of our hearts. And what was missing in the heart of David's brothers? Well, throughout Scripture, we see a holy vision for life. And sometimes that vision is blurred by limits and biases that affect the discernment. Yet overall, we get this vision of love and compassion and justice that will enable human community to thrive. It's one of my convictions of faith in life that each of us has gifts and abilities that enable us to respond to God's vision. Those gifts and abilities are different, they are varied. For some, they are gifts more commonly seen as leadership. Others, they're more in the category of service. Those gifts and abilities are present at whatever age we are. So I love these biblical stories of children 
being called because one of my passions in the life of the church has been to honor the ministry of the children. I remember witnessing a four-year-old approaching a recent widow at a community event and asking the woman if she would like him to sit next to her. And later when asked about the moment, he responded, I thought she might be lonely. One of the highlights of our COVID time as a congregation for me was when Charlotte, 12 year old, directed and produced our Christmas pageant video. There are many other moments of compassion, of wisdom, of creativity, of care, of service that I have witnessed from those who at one time were undervalued. And I give thanks for the gifts of leadership and service from a persons of a variety of ages. And yes, there are times when our vision becomes impaired. Times when the vision of God gets blurred or distorted in our actions. There are lots of human reality that can distract and affect our response. Jealousy, selfishness, fear, inadequacy, apathy, etc. There are cultural norms and trends that shape our thinking about popularity, about success, about status, about leadership. And sometimes we need to find new priorities for defining who we are and called to be. There are times when our societal norms need examination. And we see with new glasses some of our history and cultural assumptions and systemic limitations. And so a sense of what is holy vision is corrected. We are prompted to open our eyes that we may see and to open our hearts so that God's vision may be written upon us. One psalm that is often associated with this passage is 1 Samuel, from this passage from 1 Samuel is Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. It's a psalm that invites reflection, confession, and trust as we recognize our spiritual impairment, as we seek to be faithful to God's vision. David did not have 2020 spiritual vision, but lived with a sense of purpose and call. So may we open our hearts to holy possibility and seek a clearer vision of what is and what could be. May the holy optometrist see in our hearts a willing and renewed spirit, and may our blurred vision find corrective lenses. And that reminds me, it's time for my next optometrist appointment. I wonder how blurred my vision has become. Amen. We join together in reflecting on the words humming in our hearts, the hymn, Open My Eyes.
So we come to a time where we uh, dedicate our offering. And again, we give thanks for, for the variety of gifts, for the variety of ways that service and response and gratitude is offered for the life of the congregation. And so we dedicate all those gifts to God's ministry of love, of partnership, of hope. Let us pray. <clears throat> Loving God, we come to you and join our voices with your church around the world as we pray. Patient and wise God, you have called this church into being to serve you in this world by helping others. We rejoice in the many ways we are able to be of help. We offer our prayers for each other, for those near and dear to us, for the situations of difficulty and strife around the world. You hear our voices cry out and with your eternal compassion, you respond in loving care to each of us. We are here this day, many of us able to actually meet and greet each other, and through technology are able to celebrate our continued fellowship and friendship, welcoming each other in your name. You remind us that you are with us always. What have we to fear? But we fear far too often the unknown tasks that lie ahead of us. We always want to be assured of the happy outcome of our efforts. Help us to trust your guidance and presence, O oh God. Help us to remember that there is no time in which we are out of your care. Enable us to be serving in ministry and mission with joy and confidence. Heal our wounds. Bind up our bruises. Bind up our broken spirits. And put us on a pathway of your peace. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I do want to uh, share a few announcements with folks. Um, first of all, um, you may have guessed why I'm wearing the shirt and tie that I'm wearing today. It, it is the Jamaican, my Jamaican outfit. And uh, tonight is Jamaica night and uh, it goes virtually, uh, it goes live. Well, it, it's launched at 6.15 tonight, but you can watch it anytime after that. Um, the link was in the email today. We are also going to have a, a couple of people mentioned that they don't have access to that. So we're going to have a watching party uh, here, uh, very simply, uh, just in here watching it on the screen. Um, hopefully, hopefully at that point, my computer will be able to produce sound. Um, so, and we'll gather for 6.15 to do that. Um, do want to thank... Uh, 
folks that have put that together, and particularly John Ginridge, who once again, uh, I don't know how many videos he had to edit together this year to make that production, but it was it's several and uh, various qualities, various formats. And so to make one production was is a lot of work. And so thank you, John, for that. Um, and Jean Peart, who uh, who's done a lot of the pulling together and, and the getting the flow of it together um, is to be thanked as well. Of course, that Jamaica Night is our major fundraiser to support our partner in Jamaica Providence Methodist Church and its programs, the Home Visitation and Nursing Program and the Mission House Basic School in Gordontown. And so we encourage donations towards that. Um, also today, before, before Jamaica Night even happens, uh, three or four weeks ago, uh, we were invited over to the Mosque of Mercy to, to walk with the seniors group there and uh, about a dozen of us were there. And we said we needed to do that again. And I was starting to look at the calendar and realizing it was kind of our turn to invite. And Sunday's afternoon seemed like a good time and they were vanishing in terms of weather. And so today is the day, uh, invited to gather two o'clock. Uh, we'll, we'll stay outside because the meeting house will be setting up in here, but uh, hopefully we can go for a walk towards uh, Hogsback. I uh, don't know how many will come from the mosque, but uh, hopefully we can have a, uh, just a, uh, again, low, low scale program, <laughs> just walk together. <laughs> and um, anyway, mind you about a couple other things happening. Uh, workday Wednesdays on, on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Uh, again, uh, several things got done. You might have noticed less hot potholes again in the parking lot this week. And um, there's a few more things to do. We have a, we have a, a new tenant in our garage. Uh, called a raccoon, we think. So we've been trying to solve that problem for a while. So we might work on that a bit on Wednesday. So if you've got any raccoon hunting experience, um, there are other jobs. <laughs> um, man, is there anything else I should be announcing? The bazaar is coming up in a few, the mini bazaar on the 13th of November. Um, I don't think of anything else. I think, oh, wait. Right, yeah, I, I mentioned in the email the organ. Uh, the organ uh, is wounded at the moment. It has a power supply that shorted out. And so we're waiting for that part. And so hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll have that. And hopefully in a few weeks, we'll have the audiovisual system too, believe me. Um, we, we, the audiovisual system is, is, we're getting there because we had, a, had to fill out a form this week called the delivery uh, form. And so we had to say whether we had a loading dock or not. So the easy question to answer. No, we don't. Anyway, the, um, so hopefully that'll be arriving and we'll get that installed because uh, this is uh, second best for sure, this method. But it's better than us not being together or not being able to offer the hybrid stuff. So. Speaking of the frustrations around this technology, at this point, I was going to plan to share uh, a video of the Regeneration Music Group from Providence Methodist Church singing The Blessing. And it worked. And then we went on to um, Zoom and we tested it and Zoom could hear it, but we can't hear it in the room. So, um, not sure what to do at the moment. <laughs> other than to maybe put it on and leave it for the Zoom people to hear. And then I'll offer the benediction here and we can imagine it. I don't know. <laughs>
in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, is for you, is for you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, is for you. Is for Thank you.